Um, you want to lead off? Why don't we uh, uh, go ahead? Uh, which, what's your name, please? Uh, my name is Luke, local agent. Okay. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what we're looking for for this, I suppose. Um, if this exactly is right, but um, I'd like to, to look into maybe a specific amenity that is community art and culture centers. Um, and what sort of impact that has on a community, as well as how, and, and also how, how and whether or not, I'd say, policy can support or facilitate that, uh, whether that is something that has to arise organically, humanly, within a community, human relationships, or whether that can be created through formal relationships. Okay. Uh, I'm smiling because in, in China there wouldn't be any any doubt that there, there, there are multiple ways. Uh, <laughs> here, you can often see things more dominated by, by, say, individual entrepreneurs and people who are opening an art gallery or, or something like that. Right. Whereas, uh, we do have in the background things like planning, or we can have an alderman who wants to encourage an art zone or other kinds of things like that. And so, in that sense, often the U.S. is more diversified. And, but, but the, the the fact that it's that, <coughs> that that you ask that question is is interesting in the sense that if you have a in, in when you have a bigger project, if, it, if it's one small one small art gallery, that's that's small. But when you get to you know an, an, an art zone or an art city. And they, they have those in China, they have those in Korea, where you have um, uh, dozens or hundreds of artists living in one town together and was created, designed by uh, the city or the region to enhance artists' activities. So that, that's not one, one artist or one firm or whatever. So, so the, the <coughs> within, so the, the, um, the causes are, in a word, are more complicated usually. That is your second one about some of the consequences. If you have more of that, what might that change? Then the question is, what kinds of either policies or impacts might you want to try to try to look at? And in the short of, short space of one of one paper, this is a, a, a good a good point for more generally folks. Um, if, if you're doing this just as a class paper, you don't have time to gear up to, to do, you know. Uh, um, could, could, could we please uh, just lock, lock, lock the door open with the chair, and then it'll stay open for the last minute or two. Well, yeah, I recognize that. Just because this is a class paper, it's not like you're looking at like a worldwide view of this probably sure. isn't possible, but sure. I was thinking as a like to be more specific to be like a Chicago land. Like how maybe comparing two different neighborhoods or focusing on one neighborhood in the development of that or support of that? Um, you know what the door is open. You want a, you want a problem, right? Yeah, it, yes, please. Yeah. No, it, 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 I, I just can't see from here. So it, it is open. It, it, okay. Yeah, that's okay, that's great. Um, but that, that raises methods. I mean, how, how do you get something to say beyond what's what's in your head now and you that is Chicago's a good a good city and it's the most studied city in the world <coughs> but we don't have a lot of new things on the new some of, of, of all, all the multiple new issues which is fine I'm going to talk about that then. the um, we have lots of data but if 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 Gearing up to do a, a um, um, analysis of if if you're comfortable for you and this is for other people too, if if you're used to knowing how to analyze some things like this from courses in um, compute you know, computers or statistics, fine. If you have none or little, then. Um, uh, it's it's harder to it's harder to, to it, that, that 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 is hard. <coughs> that so a solution there is often for, for maybe two or three people to work together 
someone who knows how to do the data analysis, someone who wants to, to, to do some interviews, the third person who wants to read the literature, and then put, put, put the three things together. So, so all, all of those are, are options. Uh, and the, the, way, the way you framed it, it's a, it's a, this, is a, this is a major big issue, as you can see, that we're covering in the course. We're bringing in material from many other countries, many other cities, uh, and so forth. But the, the um, um, I mean, an, an, another way to do it, for instance, is to, is to, is to draw on newspapers and, and use some expert informants and to try those as a, a background for methods um, and, and try to look at some aspect of that. For instance, uh, an assistant alderman or try to, if there's, if there's a committee meeting of the Chicago City Council that deals with, with topics that might, might be of interest here. There's a, a, um, a um, Department of Cultural Affairs and the Department of Planning, and they both have staff. And I've, I've worked, for instance, with a woman who, was, who had a joint appointment in both of those. And she, she came to class, and uh, she's, she and I have done some presentations. She's gone. She's, she's not in Massachusetts. Uh, <coughs> so the, um, uh, the, these, are, these are some options. Uh, is that enough to think about? Should we stop there? Any follow-up? Questions or thoughts on any of that? That's enough, that's enough to sort of get it going. But I might right. follow up with some more questions. When I do any and I, I said a little more because that this could apply to ten of ten of the right. topics in, in, in the same way. What if we what if we go around the room then? Yeah. So I was thinking about for the final paper doing a comparative analysis because I don't know if you know, but there's plans going on between uh, Chicago and Paris based on urban planning and they're comparing <coughs> with each other and they're talking with each other regularly between the rural Chicago urban planning and the local bioclimatic plan for Paris and they have a lot of exchanges. Sorry, which, which plan for Paris? It's the plan uh, bioclimatic. It's, it's the Paris plan for the climate in urban planning, which is similar to what is being done with rural Chicago, and there's a lot of exchanges between the two, and it's interesting how completely different laid out cities address urban planning for the climate similarly by talking with each other in that sense, and through the project and exchanges between architects and urban planning that have been going on between the two cities. And, and you've, you've been partially involved with this personally? Yeah. Okay, well, that, that, that's, that sounds great, sure. Maybe how would you go about seeing the size of the final paper? How would you go about in splitting up sections? Would you do it like chronologically, by team, by city, and then comparing them? Yeah, the normal paper of what we call in the, in the syllabus of papers, 20 pages, double spaced, um, ma ma maximum probably. <laughs> Or that is roughly roughly that, not not a lot more or less, is the way it's discussed. Beyond that, or instead of that, one can do memos or postings on on Canvas, or which could be of, of any length, and they could be, say, three postings. Where if you're doing three parts of the paper, you could post them and then and then circulate them around and try to get some 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 feedback about about. Um, one or two, or what, whatever, uh, often ideally with the introduced question. Uh, here's some questions I'm, I'm wondering how about, how about doing how about doing this versus that, for instance. Uh, <coughs> the, um, and, and so all of these are options. That is, most, most students just for this course seldom do um, a paper if you're also doing the exams, but especially if you have a job where you're getting paid for and so forth. And, you're, and you know, and you know pretty pretty much about the topic already. 
maybe you could almost sit down and write the paper, which would be great. Uh, and so, uh, and, if, and if there's a fair amount of, of data or reports or whatever, which is which are being generated by, you've got a lot of research assistants in, in that sense. So, so that, that um, uh, next step might be to try to link this to more general theorizing, um, how, to, how to make sense of this with questions about where and why. Um, that is, you could stress, as you mentioned, maybe the differences between the two cities, the sort of the national traditions, which is talked about as France being more hierarchical, more centralized, a strong state, environmentalism is a big national issue. Um, that is, it, it's, it's better addressed following Paul Peterson, um, others, this, it's hard to do this in one city. Uh, and, and so, and often, even if you want to, there tend to be national regulations. So, so we have many, many individual cities who are doing anti-pollution, air pollution control kinds of pro 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 projects. Before the, the uh, Richard Nixon, under Richard Nixon, the, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency was created. And we, we were doing surveys of cities about the environment before and then after. And so we had both data on, on which groups were in favor of, opposed, or whatever, in terms of environmental pollution kinds of practices, and then, and then well, what went in our change. Sorry, so you're talking about climate. So climate is, is, more, is more complicated still, but in, in the sense that these are big, yeah, maybe, maybe quick question, so what, 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 what's, what's an example of a big issue? That may, may, in, in either city? Uh, the presence of cars versus public transportation uh -huh. or um, like walking and creating. I don't know if you know, but you know the Champs Elysees, the big, uh, where all the cars are, but once a month on the weekend they're completely shut to cars. And that had been, that's still like a big example, but it's been happening in a lot of neighborhoods where car had become less and less of an option and they're making it a lot harder to drive a car forcing or like making people use public transportation or walk okay, and making no, that 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 This is terrific. I mean, this is, this is a hot issue internationally. It's very hard and, and, if, and in general the French are doing more and if, they, and if both in the city, are any of these more national or are these mostly a city of Paris? The, I mean, they're national and for the big cities like Lyon, Marseille, Lille, there's a lot of those big cities where and metropoles where the use of the car has become a lot more limited and a lot more consumer. Yeah, okay, but but is, why has it changed? Is it a city law or a national law, is what I'm asking? Or regulation somehow? I think there, there are national regulations, but they don't go to the length of cities. So that world, like, every city has to be a certain law, but like, for example, the left, when the mayors are from the left, like Lille or Paris, they have little stickers that limit which car can enter the city, and that doesn't exist, for example, in Marseille. Why don't you, why, why don't you turn the camera for, for one minute on yourself, <laughs> and then, then you need to turn it around. How about that? <laughs> okay. So if pe people are listening after that, they, okay. Um, now this, this all sounds great. I mean, you, you've got a lot of, you've got experience, you've got data, and you, they're, 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 a moderate amount, medium high amount of literature on this. So I, I'd say this, that, that, this, that this looks great and there are lots of it. So I, what I said, I guess maybe how to join it with the course and maybe if there are a couple of theories about where and why themes that you want to in, invoke them. Look, look, you know, that is, I guess, suggestion for everyone, ideally. Look for, there's a, there's a memo on, on this, aim for three testable hypotheses, not trivial, which are, and if, you know, if they're really, you know, um, plausible and strong and compelling, people may be fighting over it because it should be this or it should be that, as to why, you know, how can we uh, reduce pollution or how can we reduce car use or increase pedestrians and so forth. <coughs> um, and so that, that's a rationale for theorizing and for joining with the course because we, we've, we've, we've tried to include not just descriptive reports 
but to try to make this into something to use, um, connect with social science. And so we've got either more, system, more, more system, systematic data and potentially testing of theories. And, uh, so and again, this, this holds for you. What if we push on around, we have one or two hands up, maybe, yes? Uh, so I, I, I was uh, generally thinking of doing something with politics. I know of, uh, Sorry, we, we missed your first sentence, so a question went by. Uh-huh, uh, things uh, have to do with politics and voting patterns. So I know of uh, uh, interactive websites where you can select precincts throughout different states for electoral and census data by census tract. So basically, I just want to go through some examples of uh, breaking down some of the recent elections and recent referendums on various issues by state to see how these coalitions sort of uh, uh, fall, both in terms of elections, or, sorry, both in terms of partisan elections and in terms of referendums. So you can kind of see and measure uh, abortion referendum. How did, uh, I'm just off the top of my head, in Michigan, how did the Arab neighborhoods vote? How did the uh, Polish neighborhoods vote? Mexican. Uh, and how does that compare to the presidential election? And just because, to my knowledge, that hasn't been done for the most recent elections. Uh, it's, uh, I've never heard that. It, it, it sounds terrific. You know, and and what, what's the name of one of these sources? Uh, the one I'm thinking of is Redistrictor. It's a it's it's a it's a very new website. It's a subscription, eight dollars, uh, six dollars a month. Okay. So it's just something that I you know look at, look into. That sounds great. That sounds good. I mean, I'd love to learn about it um, with you with you doing this. So try to, let's let's talk. Another hand up. you're thinking of now, or is it something, because you, you've done many research studies in the past in China. Uh, yes, this is a, a project uh, uh, recently, recently, and I should uh, do this research uh, in this year, because I uh, should pay, uh, to write a paper uh, for school. So you're thinking of something that might be one a one year long, so a longer paper than, than, than just this course. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can can uh, continue? Yeah, last year for one year. Yeah. Can sorry. Okay, and that that's the. Um, Bestseller and controversial. Um, I'm, I'm blocking out about the, about the, uh, the Tiger Mom. Yeah, FC. Okay, now, do you, you, you know the book? Do you know about uh, it? Tiger Mother, uh, like her, uh, a Chinese mother. Yeah. Yeah, I see. But, but it's one book. Do you know that book? I know. I have seen the first. Okay. Yeah. That is, it, 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 it was very controversial and very widely discussed. I would say looking at it, for example, look at the debate between the author and the president of Harvard, who is a very smart economist and who is committed to Harvard's 
general education, if you will, as an, as an undergraduate activity, which does not exist in that same, I shouldn't say it doesn't exist, but it's much less salient in China. So the, the, the role of general education, which is stressed at this university and in many of the elite universities, is the opposite of what the traditional Chinese and most European and tradi most universities of the world do not have general education at the university level. They have people that go into it, and, and so the, the counterpart is called vocational education. So contrast with general education on one hand and vocation. If you have vocational activities and people say, I wanna be an architect or I wanna be a doctor, then you can say, the, when you say the mayor could develop some activities that relate to that area, that, that's the kind of thing you have in mind? I, I think. Yeah, you're, different you're, kinds, the different type of uh, college or, or school. Or and in this, with this example, if there were, if the, if the city had many architectural firms, it's a good, therefore a good student to study architecture. But that's the kind of thing you mean? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But you, you see why the logic falls down if the, the University of Chicago has is committed for college, if we're talking about college, it's general education. Therefore, uh, the I mean the normal general educational point in which you can get in many of the debates about the Tiger Mom book is, um, well, let, me, let, me, let me back up one, 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 one phrase here. Uh, I supervised a student who did a survey of USC college students. Uh, it was a pretty large survey, you know, maybe, maybe a thousand students. And he, would, he was from Asia, and he was in interested in the Asians compared to the Americans. So he, he, I think he oversampled maybe at half of each, something like that. And there were very big differences. What was it? The Asians mostly were committed to more vocational, we could say, specific job and, fine, and, and rewards, earning them more money. Whereas the more dominant for many of the, the Americans was they, they would say, I don't know what I want to do after college. I do not have any plans for a job. And then I'll give you, I'll give you one anecdote. I had one, one young woman who was from, who was from Korea, and, and she came to my office in tears. She said, I don't know what to do. Please give me advice. I said, what's that? She said, my mother says, I hope you will get a job where you can buy me a new Mercedes. Because I've never had a new Mercedes. I went to my father and he said, Don't do that. That's selfish of her mother. You want to be an artist and you can't earn that money for a Mercedes. If you want to be an artist, you be an artist. That's the kind of conflict which could come out from both the Tiger Mom and the mayor's policy. You my point? <laughs> and, and the background for that, of course, is in Asia, the classic pattern was children will support their parents for generations into the future. And so they may live together. They may, if not live together, at least they're supporting the, the, the children will financially support the parents later on when, when the parents are retired, whatever. But the, the ch and, the, and the children tend to be more assisted, supervised, like the Tiger Mom. You're going to work hard because also you need to earn money to pay to help me live more, more happily when I'm when I'm older and you're older. I mean that so that that's a that that in a sense to simplify. That's a major international variation, it's not uniquely Chinese, but it's more generally Asian. And we have aspects of this, of course, within the US and with, with, with within China as well. And there are now, in the last, especially the last 20 years, the mayors have gotten involved in Korea and in China 
because some Korean children would say, I will not support my, my father, my parents. And the parents then go out and, they, and they're camping in the parks. They're homeless. And the mayors are saying, you children should take care of your parents. And the children are saying, we don't want to. You, you, if you want to put, if you want to build housing for elderly, that's fine. But that's not the duty of, of us. We're, in, we're individualists. Okay, that, that kind of debate is going on now inside China and in Korea. It's more visible, more visible perhaps Korea because it's, I mean, it's, it's uh, <laughs> very controversial and, it, and it's huge because it has huge implications. Okay. Okay. So, so I would say. Think about these issues and how how you how you know, how how if or that you know where that, that, that well I mean and, and, okay, okay, well, let me stop there. But let me, let's have two or three minutes of comments from all of you. Any, anybody want to give her any advice? Questions? You're raising your hand? No, no, no. Okay. I'm not that great. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anybody else? I mean, how about something basic, simple to try to, to document or to that is in a sense we have we have an I, we have ideological discussions. We have family structure. We have university organization. And we have general education versus versus uh, vocation. Versus, versus, that, that these are these are all overlapping issues, and they're all complicated. But they're but they're one, I mean, if you're if you're writing this, for example, for say a Chinese journal, you you could potentially I don't know if this is I thought I would imagine many of these things are not visible or so actively discussed among the Chinese. So you could you could bring to the Chinese reader. <coughs> Some of these, some of these issues like this, and say, you know, what, you know, where, where and how are there differences, either by countries or by cities, and then where and how might this, might, 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 might these, uh, might these issues be, be addressed in, in terms of, of, of urban policy, um, and that, that's. Um, And you could you could do a shorter, simpler version of that sooner and faster. But to get to something, I mean, to do something like a, a, that is um, original data collection or analysis or something like that could 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 be another 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 option. Um, that is what what I do not know is how much these are already there in some way inside China. Among, let's say, among either the general public or, let's say, I mean, you. I mean, for you, you as a your your professor of, of uh, is your title so sociology and planning or something like that. Yeah. So, so okay. I mean, so that I mean that those are that is those are big fields. Um, but um, if you if you take take the the readers who are say professor get journals which, which could be read by by such folks. How much, how much do you sense that they are that these issues that I mentioned are, are discussed in China by these kinds of? I mean, these are smart leader leaders of, in social science and, and planning. Some. Some. But, well, the, are there examples within China? Or yeah, not? some newspapers or some reports where we will we will discuss this issue. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean. Nobody has further suggestions. Okay. As as we go on, maybe we can get reports back from any from anyone else, um, and we can we can try to proceed. Okay. Well, this is this is useful. Um, good 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 to hear your interest and um, the yeah you know, the the other. Th theme that I mentioned in the email briefly was if anybody may be thinking about or doing a BA thesis, an MA thesis, and that you're not sure if it would fit with this course, maybe tell us about that and, and maybe, and I'll, I'll say that in case if people are viewing this but they're not in the room now, it would be, it'd be fine for us to email about that and explore that. 
Um, but uh, it's, it's, yeah, is, are you, are, it, um, one, of, one of you two guys maybe do, do, doing, a, are, you, are, you, are you in the, um, you in the MA program? No, okay, no, I'm, I'm confused then. Um, all right. Any questions on this? Yeah, I'll hesitate on what we've discussed here or any of the readings. Now, I can. I have a couple of things I can do. One, one is, a, is one topic, but I also will. Uh, I'll, <coughs> I'll, I'll go over some of the readings that I haven't talked about at all, and we may not. I mean, there's there's not time to cover everything. But is there anything? Is there anything anybody has been reading that is sort of provocative, interesting? On your, your I mean, you, you have doubts about it, but you're into, like that, that. We might talk about a little bit. Anybody want to raise a some, something you're reading this? Okay. Let me push on and inter introduce a way of cutting into some of this past, present, and future readings and, and topics here. The. Um, um, I was, I was at two meetings on Friday and Saturday. But this was the Friday meeting. This is a group, a group of the, roughly the 20 people working on, on cities in, in Chicago. So these are, these are usually urbanists, urban, they're professors, they're people at foundations, they're people in city government. Uh, sometimes they do all of these three. One of them was Dick Simpson, who was the, the um, uh, was an alderman, elected alderman, when he uh, for a, a while. He fought with Daly one, <laughs> and and then he then he became a professor at the University of Illinois Chicago, chairman of political science, as a direct of an institute on cities including Chicago, and I I don't know if he has anything on the arts in terms of, of things like that. But in terms of ethnic groups and voting at different levels, he might have some things on that. There's a num number, number of PhDs where I've been involved with, with uh, committees that, that might involve that. Uh, <laughs> the, um, the two things he's got lots of data on are corruption. <laughs> this, is the, this is the most corrupt state, along with Louisiana. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, Illinois and the city of Chicago have, have had, uh, you know, dozens of aldermen who have either been indicted, gone to jail, or whatever else, including, I think, the past three or four governors have uh, been indicted and usually gone to jail, etc. So these are the, 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 uh, let me, let me, let me, let me preface what, when we're leading into this. I had, a, I had a visitor from, from the Moscow USSR, it was then called, City Council. And he was coming here to Chicago because he, 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 had, he had heard that there might be ways of handling the problem they now have in Moscow. And he said, we have suburbs. Some of the suburbs of Moscow are trying to do things that, that are in conflict with the central city. They're attracting residents that are moving to them and they're, they're doing things like different kinds of zoning and other things which, and they're, and they're taking money from the, from the et cetera. So he said, how do you deal with this governance issue um, of, of how to link the suburbs with the central city? He was in the city council of Moscow. Uh, that was, they didn't, they didn't, so they did, like the US, they don't, they're not the city council of the suburb, they're, they're in conflict. So um, I said, well, you, you've come to a good place. And this, because this, was in, this was in the past when the regular Cook County Democratic Party organization was more robust than today. And I said, well, we have, we have one solution. We want to start with that is, and, which is one word, the party. I understand. But then we said, let's try to explore how. So we went downtown. We went to, went to some city council meetings. We, we, we got in touch with several, et cetera. But 
My point is, this is not a unique Chicago or for Paris kind of issue. Um, but the way it gets framed often has drastically expanded. And let me say this is not just a city issue. When we had a, one of the, one of the an, an excellent session class here was what, do, what happens with the ouster and why did we have the ouster of the Speaker of the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. And you had great things to say. And these issues are, in that sense, happening in, we discussed in that conversation with President Macron in France, who just basically, with his new party, quasi destroyed the leading other parties in France, the same thing had happened in Italy. You'd had really three main parties, Christian Democrats, Socialists, and Communists after World War II. Those really all, after 19, after 19, um, uh, 89, with the Berlin Wall went down, the the apart the the the, uh, the Communist Party dropped substantially, and the the uh, party system then basically. So I'll add one more thing, which is shared by France, Italy, nationally, and in Chicago, corruption. Corruption may be the biggest domestic issue around the world certainly locally, but probably also nationally. Uh, and the, um, uh, there were smart young magistrates in France and in Italy who brought in a number of, of lawsuits and uh, attacked some of the, and so, so uh, attacked some of the mayors and as well as the national officials. <laughs> um, and the, the, um, The tangentopoli, basically, the the, um, the 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 amount of cost that you would have to live in an Italian city would be something like twenty to thirty percent higher. Different studies came in and would say because of corruption. There's so many people you have to pay off. It's ridiculous. What people were saying, and so, and so that that led to in turn new parties coming in. And there are roughly 30 parties which you now vote and vote for, and, are, and have serious—I won't say serious—but but you have similarly fragmentation. If you have 30 parties, um, so in a sense, that Berlusconi is, and Berlusconi was a, was a the prime minister was a, lead, a leading figure involved with this. In a sense, that's the opposite of the French case. I mean, Macron was really one president, one new party. Berlusconi destroyed the parties the old parties, and they've got many, many more. These illustrate two extreme patterns which exist all around the world. But, but cities are a great fruit fly animal to attest, to examine, because there's so many things that are going on, such as strength of the family, or how much children are dependent, because these things can vary, so we can, we can see how these, how these in turn interact. Okay, let me let me show the, the a, a new version of of uh, that is the gr the group that's been meeting in Chicago. I, I started with with Dennis Judd and, and Dick Simpson, um, rough, roughly roughly tw tw twenty years ago, and we've been we've been meeting and and most of the political scientists had journalistic type data. That is, they had very few had pretty solid evidence to, to, to bring in some of these some of these considerations. This was a report by a student, two, two students here at, at let me scroll this up. Yeah. Um, political science. So Evan, Evan McKenzie was there as well. <laughs> we, had, we had a meeting on Friday, as I'm saying, and they, they were all there. The the um, this, this, is a, this is a break away from the past and having lots of data in an interesting way that it could be, could be analyzed. And it, it, I, it may be available now, but the kind of thing which you could potentially draw on in the future, and in both, even if you don't analyze it yourself, 
You can read about this. Roll call votes. You look at the, the factionalism, that is we're talking about factionalism, you can try to look at votes, and these are sometimes being reported for the, the so-called the, the new, the new um, group within with the, the, the small group of Republicans in the House of Representatives that are critical, a critical faction right now. So, um, how, to, how to handle this? I want to use this mostly just to show that we've got this kind of data now available. Okay, turn it this way and I'll scroll up. Um, uh, one thing that the people who do this is look at how much they divide their votes and how much the people who, who vote are like council members or aldermen. Uh, <coughs> are, a, are in a coalition and they vote, they vote in the same way or they vote in, conf in conflict with each other. And basically, the, the tradition with the strong, with the, back to the, the Moscow question, the strong party in Chicago has led to something like 40, depending on how you measure it, you know, a predominant amount of the city council was connected to, supported by, actively worked with the Democratic Party. Uh, they got money, they got people who would volunteer, who would go out and pass out literature, volunteer, they're not volunteers, here's the people who have jobs for the city of Chicago usually. But they then go and work in all over, all over the city, and, some, and so then we also have some areas like Hyde Park, which has fought against this Democratic Party control for most of the 20th century. That is, this is a so-called reform, independent ward, but it's been, but that, that's been, as they say, gerrymandered. So it's been broken up into maybe three different wards with three different aldermen, and they then have different groups of voters around them, and that makes it more, more complicated. Uh, <coughs> But the, the one, one quick thing to look for is how much do people vote together and how much are they similar to what the mayor, what the mayor is proposing. And in the past, they, would, they might have, Dick Simpson has, has the one book which has analyzed this historically through the 19th and 20th centuries, was called the Rubber Stamp Council. And the mayor led the council. Okay, and under Daly one, from 1955 when he became mayor until the 70s, he really led the, the council with a firm, a firm hand. And that's, that's, that's that, that the Moscow City Council could understand. And that this is closer to um, some, some other, uh, that is other, other, other countries and situations internationally, like Russia in the past. <laughs> Um, and, um, okay. So I want to I want to show you briefly that this, this is some of the raw data. This is the percent of groups supporting the mayor in the first year, and then the, the fourth year. And what it shows basically is that there were many more of the council members who supported the mayor in year one when she first became mayor. But the summer of her first mayoral uh, office, there were, we had lots of disturbances nationally covered. The major, the major buildings on North Beach, the so-called the, the, the you know, million dollar mile, people had, sh had shown up, broken the windows, gone in, robbed, stolen, all, all, all kinds of stuff from merchandise. And then the stores, in turn, boarded up with plywood and so forth. Most of the windows for, for blocks and blocks and blocks, it was so, it was so bad. They were fighting with the police, et cetera. And so, so she was in tears as mayor. She was, you know, said, please, stop, you know, can't, don't do this. You're destroying our city. You're destroying our, 
you know, our, our, for ourselves as well as for visitors, and so for the economy, for jobs, and, I, and it was a disaster. Okay, so how to handle that remains very controversial, and it's not unique to Chicago. That is, the this same summer, these happened in especially in New York and L.A., and it was not just the mayors, but also the district attorneys. How did they treat people who were arrested? And in Chicago, the district attorney was saying, telling the judges, let them go. And so the, the mayor, I'm, I mean, I'm simplifying, um, but the, the mayor would say, you're not prosecuting enough, and the, the uh, attorneys and others said, oh no, et cetera. And so we now have a new mayor, and so we had another paper on the new mayor's issues, but basically the big issue, which I would say, which is live discussed in this paper as well as the other, as well as we have in, in other, my other examples, is factions. If we have more factions and more people who want different things, and we do, it's not clear what, you know, where there, where there, there, that is, there is no consensus. We have maybe, and so, what, the, what this paper does, which is nicely, is to, is to show that there is a, a decline in consensus. And um, I'm, I'm amazed that this is, okay, now, so, that, so the first person did more frequently support, did, voted in the same way. But the, we then we see some big ones, like Brian Hopkins, the second person, went down from 92% to 74%. So he really did not follow the mayor. Um, and so I see some others, a drop of 20%, others that may be, but there's several that are also plus. Um, okay, so the question is, what happened? Now where and why, and who, what were these potential groups of factions. So this is the number of divided roll call votes. That is, the, the general point is, there are many fewer people who did not agree with the mayor in the, in, in the fourth year than, than in the first year. But then, if we, so what happened was there emerged the, the big answer, which is, is, is good here, and is, is original in this paper, showing concretely what were the caucuses or the, what were the groups within the city council that disagreed with the mayor, and did they, was there anything which then joined them in the ways that they voted together? And he, the first, and the first, the largest ones we have here, we have, we now have five or six of these divided. Uh, uh, document here. The Progressive Reform Caucus, these people most frequently supported the mayor. Uh, uh, Sophia King is vi was vice chair. That was my alderman, and so we, we would see some of these things being discussed in, as uh, advisors to the mayor. The, the Black Caucus uh, was second but Sophia King it was also a member of the Black Caucus, uh, and she, she, her vote was 87% supporting, supporting the mayor. Okay, this, this is the second, the second largest, I think, caucus. The third was the Latino Caucus, and many of them, many of them still supported the mayor, but two or three really did not. Uh, then we have the LGBT caucus, and it's interesting to have actual, and so the, these are, tend to be publicly um, gay, lesbians, and who are uh, visible in, in politi political terms. The Democratic Socialists nationally were committed to a, a national party that was basically a, a um, so, a so, so, so socialist, socialist um, program. Um, and then we have your cons a conservative voting bloc, which
which were described as sometimes voting Republican in national elections, but they were, they often were not, I mean, there are only three listed here, and then others who were, um, others who were, were potentially voting with them. But they, but they, but you can see, they more often voted against, against uh, their likelihood. Okay, then we have the so-called Chicago machine voting bloc. Uh, Edward Burke is the most famous visible. He, he previously really was the, and he's, he's being tried, he's said that it's for, uh, by, 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 his, by, the, by the courts about um, his involvement with corruption, et cetera. So, but, but he was very important. He was chairman of the finance committee and made some, and, and, and has been involved for decades in, in, in major policies in, in Chicago. Okay. The, um, okay, then these are chairs of the, of the city council committee. Okay, that, and that, that gives you, well, the, I, I won't try to show the detail, I think they're 70 pages, but they've got, they've got hundreds of thousands of votes and data on these kinds of things that go back historically. And so this is this is a very rich kind of potential source. Okay, so that in that that theme you 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 can see. Um, let me let me link this then with uh, some of the theories about these issues of factions. That is, we you invented many of the propositions about um, the ousting and the role of a small we can call it a caucus in the House of Representatives, and some have linked them with Trump or supporting, but I was, you know, linked with um, former President Trump, who's, who's running now. Others have linked with him, or, that is, are, are not, but they're still, they're still clearly fighting with the, the, the general party leadership. Uh, and so where and how to deal with these kinds of fa factions, in a sense. I'll say the, mention briefly that the, the classic source, if we were in a political theory course, would be we'd go back and we and read um, the founding fathers, and Hamilton wrote the most famous essay about factions. That was his, his term. They didn't talk about political parties at all, but they did discuss factions in that in that English term. <laughs> um, and there are lots of, the, and then before that, there, 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 there's more. But but the the um, the issue of how to handle this one when we we dealt with the, in the community power se se sections, how might this have come out? And how how was this theorized or labeled or handled in, in any of the readings that we remember now from the community power section? A label. Be that is, if we had a city that had many factions, what might be another label for that that we saw that was used by any of these readings? Simple answer is pluralism. Pluralism, which Robert Dahl stressed, um, is a way of contrasting the degree to which the leadership as well as something like the city council or an electoral body can be pluralistic in having multiple ways of making different decisions. And the way he documented this was on three issues, mayoral elections, schools, and the and economic development. And so these three, three issues were very different and that the actors were different. And business was important for, for, for economic development. Business was not important in the two other issues. Whereas in Atlanta with Hunter, he, he argued basically that business dominates everything. And so the main literature, one, maybe 100 studies have had in maybe, um, you know, 100 studies that were done roughly in those years after after the, community, the book called Community Power Structure by Hunter, many, many, many others would say, you know, American cities are dominated by business. All the, st all the research shows that, and it did. Not all and not every city, 
but that was the dominant finding. Dahl then, in, this was 1953, 1961, Dahl came in and said, you're, do, you're using the wrong methods, you're not measuring business properly, you're using the wrong questions, you're not asking about issues. And if you ask about what are they actually doing about specific issues, you'll get different results. Okay, so then, so then, then that, that went on in terms of debates and so forth about, about, about how, how to do this, and, that, and, that, and, and that's aspects of that are still continuing today. Um, <coughs> the, the, um, the book that we read chunks from was Community Power, uh, was, sorry, was con Community Structure and Decision Making, which I edited. And the, <coughs> the, um, the core thing it did was to ask not who governs, but who governs where, when, and with what effects, and which was to use the methodology which was to compare cities. And until that point, no one had studied more than four cities in a comparative way. Four, sometimes two, but almost all the research was about one city, one city, one city. And they didn't know if, the, if their city was different. They didn't have any data that you could really compare against. So we didn't start, so we, we moving in that direction, I really was working on the book before we had any data, but we knew that we were gonna, have, will have some data, and so I formulated a series of propositions that we could test, and we then, later on, it's not in the book, it's later on, we tested these in, in papers and found, indeed, big differences from city to city. Um, <coughs> but the core propositions tend to be the causes of what we can call um, centralization, or let's say the opposite of pluralism. And most of the debate had been why might we have in our, or, or, sorry, two, two debates. First was, where, where do we have um, If this is a general pattern in, in American cities are business dominated and there's a central control around um, a, a coalition of business leadership like a city, like a chamber of commerce of business leaders, then the question is, so, so is that true or not? I mean that, that a lot, I mean that was half of the debate. So the question was what is in that box? Describing it was 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 a big a big issue. Second, and what my propositions were, were then to say, what might lead to more centralization versus more pluralism? And so I focus more on, the, on, the, on things like economic differentiation. And so if we have, say, in a, in a city that has 25 different major businesses, different, you know, different kinds of things, that's different than if you have just a, um, uh, say Gary, Indiana, which has steel. You know, if, if your business is steel, um, then steel companies work together, and you don't have you don't have a, a, a economic diversification. So the greater the economic diversification, we should have the the, the more the more the more pluralism. Okay, so it would be that proposition. Um, then you could have the same thing about the the. the, 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 the the social composition in terms of um, ethnic background, same thing in terms of income, same terms of uh, that is we could operate, we, we, so there's, we have a general proposition, the more differentiation, the more structural differentiation, the more in multiple sectors, the more likely we are to have, to have more um, uh, pluralism in, in uh, decision making. Okay, that, 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 that was a, that was a clear kind of um, kind of way of, of analyzing this in clear propositions. I, I said we ought to study who governs where, when, and with what effects. Effects are over here. These are the policy outputs. Okay, here we had much less 
uh, research or, or ideas about, about this. And, and it tended to be conflictual. That is, some people said, if we have more centralization, I mean, the kind of argument maybe we have internationally from, from uh, Russia and, and Turkey, for example, strong leadership will have lead to better policy. And so the, 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 the widespread Western argument is the opposite. We need more democracy, uh, <laughs> et cetera. And so, so the, these kinds of things will lead to, to different kinds of, of, of uh, policy outputs. Is the, is the argument there, but we have a, there's a lot of ideology, and there's one and two. There, um, there were simply many different findings, and so I'll just, I'll mention, I'll mention um, a couple of these. James Coleman's famous book called Community Conflict, um, basically held that um, his dependent variable was should we add fluoridation to the to the water in the, the city of the, 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 the water that is that is provided to the city residents. And if we have the water, should we add that is people then discovered in the 1950s if you add fluoride, that should make your teeth not have as many cavities. The basic research suggested. But then there were small, a small number of, of people began to oppose this, of saying these these could kill you or make you sick. And so fluoridation should we should not do this. And so then there tended to be some city council members who would tend to make this into an issue. And it, it had analogs to, if you will, what we saw in the House of Representatives when we talked about Dr. Diaster, which, 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 which we're dealing with right now. But it's even if they're a small number, they could make a big, a big noise, and in many cases led to zero decision. That is not to not to add fluorine to the water. Okay, so Coleman's Coleman's interpretation was. If we have more participation and more democracy in that sense, we will have less ability to make decisions. In a sense, it's, it's an argument in favor, you could say, of strong coherence. The opposite, the opposite argument was made by V.O. Key, a famous book uh, on uh, It's, it's, it's on the American South, so so he and he was a, a leading a leading political scientist. Um, uh, Harvard when when he did did that book, well, I, think he, I think he trained here in Chicago. But I'm not sure. Anyway, <coughs> um, he came out with the opposite finding in the sense that he compared the South to the rest of the country, and he found that the South, and then within the South, there were differences in terms of the welfare benefits. And the, 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 point, the point was that the, the states in the, in the American South had paid lower welfare benefits or no benefits to their citizens. And the other parts of the country uh, then varied. And, hit, and basically his argument was if you have more participation and more engagement by citizen groups and more public discussion, they will tend to provide higher amounts of, of support. So, the, so, so I'm giving you an argument for both a plus or a minus sign. And, and I'm give, I give you just two examples, but there were dozens of examples that conflicted, that, that gave either a plus, minus, or zero. And, it, and or sometimes they'd even say it depended on the issue area. And if we have data, we begin to get the data, for instance, for budgets. So if you look at the budget for police compared to schools, compared to parks, it may be that the signs are go from positive to negative. So sometimes the cities will, you know, will do more or others, others the opposite. Okay. This, so in, in a sense, if we have factions in the, in the House of Representatives or in the city of Chicago right now in, the, in Mary, Mayor Lightfoot's term, 
is this bad? What are the implications in terms of, so again, we're, we're dealing, say, with, in, in, your, in Tom's paper of, of your Paris, Chicago example, how can we reduce automobile usage and how can we increase the number of pedestrians and how might this, might, 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 might this change um, and what, with, with what policies? And if these were widely discussed in a participatory way, might that be one versus having you know, the president of the country or the mayor alone saying, you must have you know, um, these laws about where, where and how you use bikes or cars or buses and, and so forth. So the the the, uh, the the so let me well um, we could have some discussion. We could, we could get more examples to, to see that there are, that there's there's diversity. But um, I the, the quick point I'm making it was about 15 years that people worked on this, and no one came up with a clear answer. And so, so some of us worked together on, on this, including um, Eleanor Ostrom, who got a, she's the first woman polit and political scientist who got a PhD and who got a um, Nobel Prize in economics. Um, and we worked in the public, through the Public Choice Society. And bas basically, the, she, and she, she, worked, she did a lot of work on voluntary associations. And one, one, one issue was, <coughs> to classify the types of policy outputs. And so the, the concept that we brought in uh, was, was public goods, which we talked about briefly, Paul Samuelson's definition that if you have things like air pollution, this, is, this affects everybody. Whereas if you're talking about a welfare benefit to one person, or let, let's say one, one, one pair of shoes or one loaf of bread, is consumed by one person, so that's a pri pure private good. And if we then have something in between, we could classify those goods as being ranging from very private to very public. And so the idea then is, if we if we classify the types of goods or services that were provided, and are they um, <coughs> they vary, the hy the hypothesis proposition driving this, which we added in, if we include, we add the types of goods, public goods here and private goods down here, centralization encourages public goods, or centralization should decrease private goods. That was our proposition, and so that, that's the kind of thing which one could bring to some of these discussions of factions and brings corollaries, for instance, how do you want to organize? That is, if you want to organize support or, or, or for more, more pedestrian usage, you could try to say, let's have more public meetings and have rallies and have bicycle events, such as the, the um, once a month, there's a group that rides around their bikes all around Chicago and, and many, many other American cities, and, and then now it's international. Um, and Mayor Daley used to go, he supported them, uh, whereas in New York, San Francisco, other places, that the mayors fought against them because they were that they were they would stop traffic and so forth. Okay, let me let me um, let me stop with that <coughs> for a minute. Um, let me let me let me stop with any with any qu any questions or comments on, on on this of what I've said. I can I can go on and talk about I I, I can go on and talk about some other other readings. Um, some some of the so I'd say some of the big ideas. I'm looking. I'm not trying to go through re just just reading per se so much as look for some bigger themes that join multiple readings like like uh, factions and so forth. But yes. This is generally pretty unrelated to this exact thing, but why is it that, because I, I know that Chicago and New Orleans are always in contention for the most corrupt metropolitan areas. I'm wondering, 
Is Louisiana, is that because of Huey Long? Or why is Louisiana, I know about the Chicago machine, but why is Louisiana specifically always number one or a close second? Yeah, I'm asking if I've seen any national urban comparative study and there are international studies. There's a, a group in Washington that's quoted nations in terms of corruption. And there have been global studies that try to look at associations of, the, of corruption in that, in that way. But when we get to, to um, The, the main things that, that are, have been most measured that are, that are and discussed in, the, in these terms are, <coughs> say, the size of a budget. That is, why do some cities spend more money? And then second, related to that, especially uh, which cities have, have higher numbers of staffs or lower numbers of staff. So in the book City Money, we took a number of um, types of city government staff and then we created measures of um, if we analyze, for instance, higher spending has 10 possible associations like people who are, who are cities that may be more affluent may be generally spending more. People who are Democrats may tend, may tend, to, may, may tend to support spend more uh, and so forth. But if you then take a, a, a residual, you, you do a multiple regression and you say, what, how different is the result from what we would have predicted based on those 10 characteristics? Which cities are spending more than you'd expect with a positive net sign or a negative sign in terms of the amount of corruption, for example? And, and, the, and the things that we analyzed, for instance, in the City Money book were unions. How much public sector unions, if we have s sectors that, and so, and then how strong is the union in places like Detroit? So Coleman Young, who was the very tough president of the United Auto Workers, we just finished the strike down in Detroit, and you know, covered with Biden, you know, marching with them, et cetera. <laughs> the, the, the tradition in Detroit with, with Coleman Young with being president of the union and the mayor, they, they, they paid more. Not only did they have more employees, but more important, if we, if we, if we look at a union pers perspective, they, had, they, had paid, they paid more. So this, if you look at the, the, average, the average pay of city workers was the highest in Detroit above New York. New York was number two, but Detroit was a, was a poor city but they were paying very high wages because that's a, a, a union kind of, kind of policy. So that, in that way, now that, that's not corruption because they're, but, but one could then try to say, how about other, other things? Another, which, which I, I published a controversial paper on called The Irish Ethic and the Spirit of Patronage. And so we had, we had I started with just a number of the, 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 the budgets and found and I looked for, you know, which cities are spending more, and I went through the 20th century, I had data going back to the end of the 19th century, and we had, we had used lots of data. I spent seven years because I didn't want to publish it because I knew it would be controversial. But basically we found that the, the cities with more Catholics spent more money, and then cities that were Irish Catholics really spent more money, and it was not the other kinds of ethnic groups as much, not statistically nationally important as with the Irish. So the question is, what, what were the Irish doing? And so I, I developed what was called the Irish ethic, five dimensions of, of uh, sociability, trust, practicing Catholicism. Uh, uh, I can't, can't, can't give you all of them off the top of my head, but, but basically the Irish style was to be more personable and to, and to, and to the, 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 the um, and I, I, I published this in a journal edited by Father Andrew Greeley, Roman Catholic priest, sociologist. 
controversial uh, here at the USC for when, when I was when I was when I led the college program here in sociology at the USC. I, I succeeded. That is, three three friends of really tried to get him fired. Uh, hired, I managed to get him hired, and we succeeded <laughs> for uh, 20 years or so. So, but he he he. He then started an association of Irish Catholic faculty and started attacking the rest of the university, et cetera, et cetera. So the, 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 the quick point I'm saying, he knew, he, he, he then, he wrote best-selling novels and he wrote regularly um, editorials that were published nationally. He was the, probably one of the, if not the leading um, Roman Catholic, at least priest, intellectual, who was also doing social science, funding studies of NORC, Citizen National Service, and et, et cetera, et cetera. So, and, and so, he, and, and then you, okay, so basically, the, the, um, just one, one example, Mr. Dooley is a, is a uh, series of, essays and anecdotes about the Irish. He was a, a, a pub leader in Chicago. And basically, the, 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 the dual leader in the Irish ethic basically was conducive, you could say, to do, helping your friends. And so when Mayor Daley won, was attacked by the, by the Chicago Tribune and by others, why did you give those contracts to your son's insurance firm for the city of Chicago? What was the famous answer, at least ascribed to the mayor? Good thing to remember if you, if you, 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 you can use it for, for, yes, go ahead. I think it was, uh, what's the word coming to if a man can't put his arm around his son and help him out? <laughs> okay. It's a father's duty to help his sons. <laughs> is, the, is the crude, so simpler, the sim simpler version of your warm, but your, your family warm. Is the is the so we have then been doing an oral history of Chicago ever since, and the 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 image at least the feeling the definition the rationale that many of the leaders who were who were saying you know I'm Irish I have you know I am more I am committed to my family and I want to help people get jobs and we also see this with not just Irish but with Donald Trump and. President Biden in, in Washington. So that, that is, these things are still interpenetrating, but where and how much the, the Irish really made a difference in ways that, that the other cities did not. And so I, no one had shown that until, until we, 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 we'd done it so systematically. And we then, we did, we did so. So the, insofar as is some of the Irish would and did, well, okay, so one way we tested it was, what if, if, if persons who were, who were Irish worked for the city government, were they more likely to say they wanted to spend more money than if they did not work for the city government? And the answer was yes, it was a big difference. That Irish Catholics that do not work for the city and for, for government often wanted lower taxes. But those who did work for the city government more often did want to have a word in favor of on the other okay so so the so <laughs> in that in that sense this was more the people who were getting jobs and wanting to have more funding for for their for their source and there and there there are many many examples of this being pursued so the the dually, the dually example with the quotes which I'm which I'm I'm trying to I want to make more explicit is to say the Irish then built a coalition and a successful coalition in many other cities and included many Catholic immigrants and they were Catholics. And the Poles, Italians, Germans were, had, had, were had numerous enough. <coughs> um, but the, the, the idea of basically to, to summarize, we can say, the Irish ethic legitimates patron-client relations and of a sort, which is the term used internationally. Uh, we can, the, the critics will call this corruption or patronage, 
Uh, and so we, when you talk about patronage jobs, of hiring more people to work, especially in Chicago, the, the streets and sanitation was the classic department that hired thousands of people who were included no-show jobs. They'd never come to work, but they would, they would, they would work for the, in the political campaigns, and they were often children, wives, uh, cousins of political, the top political leaders. Okay. I will end with that, and that joins a little bit about the corruption with at least one of the controversial, and some of those names, I mean, the, the most important example, if you want to read a lot about this, and it's the, the trials are going on right now, is Edward Burke. Read about Edward Burke in Chicago, and he, he uh, and, and he, he was, he, the two Eddies, Fast Eddie Berdoliak and Fast Eddie Burke, were the main people who really led the Democratic Party and they had the control over the council votes, Harold Washington did not. And so the, the, um, how, how these worked and how these have changed over time are illuminating. Okay, uh, office hours, anybody right now, if you want to stay on, please do.